did you did you do it on your side as well i'm doing it okay yeah. great all right so here we are guys and um, welcome back to time for you where we nurture love and presence and well-being and we talk about the three principles um as discovered by sydney banks and my name is shelia stevens as you hopefully already know uh, Leah can't be joining us today because she's got some other responsibilities. So we have a beautiful guest. It's Marta. Hi. <laughs> Marta, hi, Marta. Please help me with your last name because you're from the Netherlands and sometimes Dutch names are a little difficult for me. But well, I'm from Belgium, actually. But that's, oh, from that's Belgium. Fine. We are, yeah, we're neighbors. So that's I that's thought you cool. were in the Netherlands. From no, Belgium. it's close. It's close. But I'm, okay. I'm from cute little Belgian um, and you know what my name is Van Kampenhout but please uh, just don't remember it because it's too too complicated in English so uh, sometimes people say uh, the other day somebody said um, Marte Kampenhout or something like that so that that comes close but uh, just call me Marte and then everything's fine very good so I wanted to just give a little a little backstory, like how we know each other. And so we met last year in 2023. Marta and I were on a mastermind with Michael Neal. Um, I think the title was Effortless Success, right? Yeah. Yes. So on. And we were seven months in the group together and we had just the best group. I mean, the, just the most beautiful people the, the deepest souls and what I really enjoyed about the mastermind with Michael was that he really made it a mastermind it wasn't just about him and what he was teaching um, but rather everyone got to speak a lot on a lot of our calls that we had and we would meet like for five hours um, every month like at one batch which I remember when I first saw that I thought how am I going to make it through <laughs> did you have the same thought Martha oh yes yes absolutely yeah. yeah but it somehow it flew by every time yeah. and uh, we had some other calls a month and I don't know Marcia but for me you were just like a grounding energy in the group and I I loved your energies you know I was like looking so forward when we had our own our little buddy call and then I like talked your ear off while we were on it so I thought today I get the chance to listen more to to you and maybe some just a little background to Marta what I know you know she's a content coach and she is also a ghost writer and helps people also with publishing their books she's now uh, got her own publishing company which we're going to talk about a little bit today as well it's just a new exciting development but maybe Marta give us also some insight like about your regular life like with your family and just so that people can get to know you a little bit yes uh, first of all thank you thank you so much uh, Shelia for having me here and I also enjoyed our uh, previous conversations so I'm, I'm really happy uh, we can talk some more today um and yes, I'm a mother of uh, one child, a girl. Uh, she's turning 12 in September. I live in Belgium near uh, Leuven, which is a very cute uh, city um, that you should ab absolutely visit if you uh, if you come to Belgium once. Um, I live near um, a forest. I, I love the countryside, but I, I also love uh, love the city. I really like the combination of both. Um, when I'm not working, which is not very often <laughs> lately, you can catch me reading or uh, just wandering around. Um, yeah, I like I like books. Uh, I'm I think I'm a bit addicted to books, uh, but also. Um, yeah, the way we met, uh, doing these masterminds, uh, discovering what is what else is there, um, what does it all mean, how does it all work, you know, constantly figuring it out. So um, I think that sums it up. Uh, yeah, very cool, yeah. very cool, very cool, very cool. You know what I wanted to ask you, and I think this would be interesting for the listeners. Like, you know, we we, we keep talking about this understanding of the three principles on on the podcast and I'm always curious to know like how did you stumble across this understanding and like what what was it that draw drew you in to start looking in this direction for yourself I love that question um because I'm also very curious always when when other people when I meet other people who are uh, who are playing with it for me um 
I was already, I think since 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 I'm a child, I'm wondering about how how does it work and why is it like that and why do I feel this and why do I think this? So this has always been this constant question in my head. Um, and then I, um, years later, I think I, I was about 40 years, I um, I had a coach and she also was on a journey and, and she was also figuring things out. And uh, I remember we read similar books and then and then uh, COVID came. Uh, so we lost a little bit, uh, we lost track of each other, um, but then I contacted her and then she mentioned look i'm doing because of covid i'm uh i'm at home now but i'm doing this online course and it's amazing i'm it feels like i'm i'm on a journey uh i'm traveling even though i'm i'm homebound i'm discovering this new place it's inside of me and i was like whoa tell me more and so she told me about michael neal and uh the space within i think back then he had a course about it uh so I was very intrigued and I um, I think I bought all of his books because the person who uh, I was talking about, I know when she's onto something, I'm also going to enjoy that. So I, I go all the way. And so I started reading the Michael Neal's books and that's how I ended up in these courses. Um, I just, I must admit, Shalia, that um, when I hear other people talk about the principles and when it becomes a little bit more theoretical, I'm not sure if I'm still connected um, because I'm a very practical person. I, I don't really like theory. Um, and that's why I like Michael's approach because the way he explains it, it's really accessible. It makes so much sense. Um, so and ever since then, I, I, yeah, I'm still hooked and I, I still uh, love everything about it. So what would you say like was the first thing and, and, it doesn't matter if it was three theoretical or practical, like what, what did you see for yourself that where you, you say, okay, that was like a pretty bigger insight into how we work and who we really are on your, on your journey of this three principles. Yeah. For me, what's, what's really mind still mind blowing. It's all created in my head. You know, there's no such thing as the world reality it's not true i'm the one who's creating it i'm the one who's inventing it um so my reality is completely different from yours yeah. and when i say it now it it sounds really yeah like so obvious but i remember the moment i realized it like for instance my partner or my child or my mom or my friend they don't see what i see they don't live what i live they live in a completely different world and it's their created world and I'm creating my world. And then when you start to think about it, you, you can go so many ways with it because that also means if it's all just created, it, I, I call it the virtual reality you create yourself. If it's all just that, you might as well create something beautiful. You know, if it's all fake and not real, why not just make it beautiful and, and nice, even if the circumstances, because of course, life is life there are things that happen to us uh there's something out there of course i'm sitting on a chair i'm i'm in this house um i'm, I'm on this globe that's all real but um what i make of it the way i play with it in my head um once you realize that there is so much creativity there and and you don't you can see it in so many ways that for me was really mind-blowing I really I remember it 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 wasn't a sudden insight it came to me gradually and I think that's a good thing but sometimes and even even today I'm like oh this is huge yeah. does everybody know this <laughs> you know that yeah. feeling yeah yeah no they don't know <laughs> most people no. don't know most people no. don't know and that's why we do this podcast to let them know and so like very practically how did seeing that for yourself change the way your experience of life was how you showed up in the world how you interact with other people like what what was it like before and what changed afterwards because of that insight yeah 
Well, I think I can now, um, I take much more risks, especially business-wise, because that's my playground and I don't harm anyone <laughs> if I if I do crazy stuff there. So that's my, you know, my laboratory where I just do my, my stuff and I follow my hunches. Um, so definitely in my business, it's, it's, it's completely changed me. I am much more, I, I've always been an intuitive person, but you know, the voices in my head were also very strong and I, I tend to listen to them um, when I was younger. And now today, I think I'm much more, um, I rely much more on my intuition. I, I follow my hunches. Um, so for that's for me personally, and I, I'm not sure if if people around me noticed a difference. I've never asked that question actually, but I I, I think they they have. Um, in my business, I also notice that I attract some some yeah a certain type of people who are also very intuitive and also you know maybe not even if they're not not uh, playing with principles or not not aware of of uh, the way we talk about them um so yeah i think that's the biggest change mm. yeah I, so what i what i'm hearing is you you woke up to the fact that you don't have to listen to the doubting thoughts in your mind, the um, the things that are making you put the brakes on, the ideas you want to play with, it just opened up a, a bigger limitless space where you play in your business. Did I, did I understand you correctly? Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, and I'm so happy that I, am, that I have my own business because I I wonder if I would still be, I until my, let's say... I've been in um, in companies, working in companies for 20 years. And I always, I, I loved my career. I was always so lucky because I had this one opportunity and then I jumped into another and it always, it was always flowing until I was fired. And that was like, whoa. And then, then I started my own business. It's a very uh, cliche story, but, <laughs> um, but I've always been happy working. But still um, the freedom I experienced today that's like whoa, and and I know I can never go back, because once you you felt this, and um, even though it's scary, because I don't have a, a hand above my head, I'm I don't have anybody else protecting me except me, um, but still this confidence and this knowing that it will all be okay, even if I don't always understand where I'm going, even if it's sometimes chaotic, and it's okay, you know, because I just. I just see my next step and I trust my inner knowing and, and the, the, the inner compass we talked about in, in the mastermind. And once you, in the beginning, it's like, am I going to trust it? Am I going to try it? Okay, let's go. And then you say, oh my God, this works. The more you rely on it and the more you see it, it actually works, the stronger it gets. And that's a really cool, uh, cool observation. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I remember during the mastermind, you, you had some moments, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I remember you, you speaking up and you were talking about every once in a while, your brain comes up and says, can this really be true that it's this easy just to follow, you know, my, my inclinations, my intuition, the thing that's guiding me? Is it, okay? is it really enough to have like, not a plan here or a plan there, but just kind of go with what's calling me forward. And always seeing you come back to, yeah, it's it's fine. It's good the way it is, right? Yeah, so, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So it's not that your brain is not doubting sometimes every once in a while. <laughs> you just are not. Yeah, ready. and you know, it still happens. I still have these voices in my head. And um, yeah, and, and sometimes they... They, they make sense. So it's not that I don't listen to them. It's more like, okay, I hear this voice, but I also feel this feeling. And, you know, you play with it and, and it's it's more, yeah, you, you start to feel what is right, what is mine. Um, I also discovered recently in, a, in another uh, coaching um, thing with, with Michael Neal, he mentioned 
we have our own original thoughts and then we have thoughts that are not ours you know they're just they ended up in our head that they're maybe our mother's thoughts or our parents thoughts or, or something we, we, we saw on social media something we, we heard somebody else say something we learned in school when we were little so many thoughts that are not ours you know and if once you you make the distinction then you know okay this is mine this is something i can trust and okay this is not mine this is insecurity this is conditioning um, and you can just let go and that is mm -hmm. that is so freeing Totally, totally. I want to come back at the end of the the conversation and I want to talk a little bit like because I know you just were in Prague and, and met with Michael and I read your newsletter on that. For for you guys who don't know, like you can you can subscribe to someone's newsletter and just have Chat GPT um translate it for you every time it comes in your inbox. I do that with Marta's email newsletter because I really love to read your weekly wonderings. And so that's how I, I kind of stalk you a little bit and know what you're doing. <laughs> I always write back to you as well. <laughs> as you know I love it yeah it's, yeah it's so cool and you know you you and I had some like back and forth emails as well like uh, leading up to um this conversation today and you told me that also one of the big things that had, had an influence after coming to this understanding is like it really changed the way that you saw marketing and I, I want to, I want you to talk about that a little bit as well. Um, but you know, it's one other thing interesting to know about you, which I thought was just totally fascinating is how quickly like Mata left the corporate world and came into her business. And like within the first year or two was already like doing high price coaching and, and having her, her practice running, which is really not typical. Um, so I'm pretty sure even before the understanding, you already were following your instincts without even realizing it, you know, from a, a subconscious space, um, because that's for me, an indicator that you were coming from here, you know, but what what did you see about marketing um, after coming to this understanding? Yeah, actually, I, I've been in marketing all my life, all my professional life, and I always loved it until I didn't love it anymore. And that was the moment I, I had my own business. I had to become visible myself. I started reading all these books and I, I started following all these people. And the more I learned, the less I loved it. And the more I started to hate it. It felt so artificial. Um, there were so many tricks. Um, you know, it's and it's all about to me, sales and marketing is actually for me, it's the same. Um, it's just for variations on the same thing. Um, it's about influencing people. It's about creating scarcity so they, they will want to buy you more. Um, and it's not so difficult if you use all these techniques um, to trick people into buying your stuff. Mm. But I don't want to do that. And then I think it was a one-on-one -on -one talk with, with Michael that my eyes went open and I'm yeah, you know, when they say once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. I, I had such a moment. I was looking through my Instagram feed and, and, and I saw a lot of marketing messages. For instance, I've been struggling with my weight for a long time and um, I've done name a diet. I have done it. You know, I, I've done every possible because when you see an, 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 uh, an ad for a diet or, or a, a new way to lose weight, it's always like, um, okay. You you uh, you could look like this, but you look like this. But if you do this, then tap, tap. so they actually what they what these ads are telling you. And and I use the example of of weight loss, but it's also about whiter teeth or shiny hair or a growing business or um, a lighter personality or whatever uh, they are selling. They give you the feeling that you're not good enough. And the the message is always hey for you you're not good enough because you look like this but good for you we have the solution just buy our stuff and we will fix you and you know that's that's the main message that is spread today by so many companies and so many people a lot of them don't realize that they are doing harm and i, I truly believe that a lot of them really think they are doing a good thing and they are helping but they don't realize that by sending this message to so many people through all these devices and, and platforms, you're telling people they're not okay. Mm. And that's that's something that's, whoa, once I realized it, it was like, oh my God, 
I don't want to contribute to that anymore. And I have done it myself, Shadia. I've done it myself. When, when I started my coaching business, I was like, hey, does your content suck? Ha, uh, no worries, I can help you. I didn't say it literally like that, but that was the tone of my message. Yeah. You know? And I was pushing on the pain like, oh, and you don't have enough visitors on your website and it doesn't, uh, you know, all these classical ways to, to make people uneasy and uncomfortable and then saying, but look, I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm here to save you. I will fix you. Yeah. I've done it before. And then, yeah. Uh, so I'm not, and sometimes it creeps up on me. So I have to be really careful because I'm so conditioned. Yeah. Because of everything I've learned in school by watching marketing myself, uh, from business coaches, it's everywhere. So I still have to be very conscious not to go th down that road, but there is another way. And so at a certain point, I, I realized, okay, you can just tell people like, you're okay, you're really okay, but I can see there's potential there. Do you want to go there with me? Can I can I help you? Can I lift you up even more? That's a totally different message. And that's the, the kind of marketing I um, I would like to you know, yeah. spread into the world. And by doing that, that's that's a really cool thing on LinkedIn, on Instagram. Um, other people who are, who are doing the same, I'm not the only one, of, uh, uh, luckily, who saw that and who is, who is uh, doing that. So so we, we are reinforcing each other and, and already spreading that vibe. So I hope it will, uh, it will spread even more and, and become the norm. That's what I really hope. Yeah, me too. And thank you for sharing that. And Leah, Leah and I are exactly on the same space. And me too. Like, I worked in advertising agencies for 15 years and um, as a strategic planner. And it was all about, you know, creating the avatar. Um, what are the pain points? Pushing on the pain points offering the solution, you know, like creating a problem and being the white knight to come ride and get it. And um, right now I'm like taking part, um, with Leah together on a course by Simone soul. And I don't know if you know her, but she's a, um, a wonderful marketing, um, expert, but she talks about the dehumanization of people, um, through the way we've been conditioned to market and, and what, what's all abundant. And she's very much trying to change that in the world. And it's all about, you know, really seeing each other as human beings and like how would you how would you talk to a friend you know yeah. you wouldn't you wouldn't like say oh well I don't know your hair is looking kind of off like here's my shampoo <laughs> you know you, you wouldn't do that you 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 would lovingly you know just be like hey I've got this new shampoo do you want to try it out let's see you know it's a whole different um approach to conversations and me too. I I am so conditioned the old way, like almost 30 years of it. Um, and sometimes it's so hard and, and I don't even notice it. Sometimes I'm even blind to it and because it's so, so prevalent. So I'm, I'm so glad you're on that path. And we are also on that path and trying to get a little bit, bit better every day. Um, yeah. 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 And I, I will definitely, I don't know uh, Simone, but I will definitely, she sounds like uh, something, uh, somebody I would really uh, like to follow and, and be inspired by. Um, yeah. And that's, that's really nice that a lot of people already see it in a different way and are, already are trying it. And a lot of people who are still doing the old way, I know they don't mean harm, you know, but it's yeah. just like you say, it's conditioning. It's what we've all, yeah, we, we just don't know any better. Um, so I think we also have to be kind and patient and, and not uh, sometimes when I'm blabbing <laughs> about this topic on social media, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm in Dutch, we say um, she's on her high horse. <laughs> yeah. I think the expression also exists in English. I It's a topic that I, uh, once you get me started, once you wake in the beast, uh, I struggle <laughs> to stop. But yeah, it's it's necessary because um, I don't know how it's in in Germany or in other parts of of the world, but in Belgium, mental well being is a big thing. Yeah, a lot of people are a lot of people are not well. A lot of people are not well, and I think part of part of it is because of this constant washing over us all these impulses um and individually they don't mean harm uh, some maybe some do uh but if if you combine it 
yeah, I, I think um, I think it's it's something we we should try to to, to shift. And uh, yeah. I think there's a lot of potential there if we can shift. But because that's the beauty of it. Um, I used to have a love hate um, relationship with social media because it can be very powerful, but it's also slightly addictive and not always good for us. But I now choose to um, appreciate the strong and powerful side of it. And I, I think we should really just see it as a beautiful connecting platform um, that can do so really good stuff for, for us. So that's also what I want to do when I contribute as a content creator, just always put nice things out there. Don't expect anything back. That's also something I uh, I like to teach in my in my marketing approach. Just put yourself out there, share what you know, don't expect anything. And then the clients will come as soon as you, you make it like, um, okay, I'm, you can download my workbook for free, but you have to give me your email address and then I will send you 25 emails every day. No, that's that's just not how it works. If you just drop it out there and people will, the right people will find it and they will, they might need, need some time to process it, but they will come to you if you just, you know, um, so that's, that's how I try to do it. And it, mm. it works, it works so well. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, that, that non-transactional attitude, just, you know, showing up and being of service with no expectations. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. That's, That's so beautiful. powerful. Yeah. yeah, and I think we can change something. Um, you know, I was recently I was watching a, another podcast, and um, you know, we we have so many issues globally. You know, just this we're talking about one of them. There's so many other things going on, and sometimes we tend to lose hope and um, that it can ever be changed. Like we're too deep down the rabbit hole. Like there's nothing to, that we can do, and, and everyone it's all prevalent. It's an it's a total bombardment or, you know, that's how we can think. And I was listening to this guy talk and he was like, no, there, there is hope. And he, he grew up in um, Great Britain and he was born in the sixties. And there's this um, picture of his mother and she is breastfeeding him and she's got her um, like cigarette pack balancing on his stomach like he's laying there doing it she's got it on top of it and she's smoking while she's breastfeeding him and uh, fast forward to today you know there's no smoking in britain in public places and you know there was there came a ban at some point because of a fire on the subway on the tube they stopped having smoking there and it just led to a domino effect and now it's a pretty you know, smoke-free environment. And, you know, so he's saying like, he was, he was bringing a lot of examples, but that was one that really stuck in my head. And I was like, yeah, no, it's true. And there is hope and we, we can make a change. We can make a shift and all, you know, what we can do as content creators, as people who bring out like things like these podcasts is we can, uh, we can contribute in that positive way. And we can share with others that they do too, that they, that we raise our consciousness around that way yeah yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm totally with you I I know I sound a bit negative earlier because I, I think we have to say um we have to make clear what is happening and and how damaging it can be but at the same time um yes I'm also a very positive sometimes <laughs> I even get um people tell me I'm too positive because I yeah, that's also something I, I like to inspire people to like, just say, say positive stuff. You don't have to rub in the pain or rub in the negative. So I'm all about positivity, not toxic positivity. Um, is that even a thing? But just, you know, there is so much to be positive about. Why not just talk about it? You know, if you see the front page of a newspaper, I'm always wondering, this is just something that happened in the world today but what about all the positive stuff why why don't you talk about mm. that yeah it's this negativity bias it's happening it's a thing um but i i totally agree and that's also something i learned from the principles and that's such a relief when you when you realize that we are all okay even when we're not okay we are okay yeah and and even when we're not okay we we will find this balance again and we we will heal and we will um yeah we are designed to be okay and that's that's such a nice empowering thought yeah and, and such a refreshing given yeah. day 
totally totally even collectively even collectively we're okay i'm telling this yeah. to myself to be <laughs> to yeah sometimes we need a bit of reminder i totally yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. well i mean let's see where I, my curiosity is taking me and I know exactly where it's going next because um, speaking of your newsletter, you wrote a newsletter a couple of weeks ago where you announced to your list that you have become a publisher. And I really would like you to just talk about like how that unfolded because um, the way you're doing things um, as you were like were talking about there is like different than other publishers are doing. Um, what what led you how did life lead you to that direction like what are you doing there how is it different okay um yeah i love the question because it's very um trending for me and happening right now so um i think it started when i was a little kid and i um yeah it's a story my, my mom told it uh recently in, in a family uh gathering um i was four or five and i I learned myself how to read with the Scrabble, the little Scrabble stones. So reading for me was like, oh my God, it's 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 an opening to a whole new world. And then going to the library as a kid, it was like, whoa, uh, okay, I can take five books. That's not much, but my parents took me very often. So, and yeah, when I stopped re started reading, I never stopped and, and I still read. I I love reading. And I really love books because I think a book is such a unique way to express a vision, to tell a story, to connect with the person who's reading because it's always co-creation. It's you put the words on a page, but the person who is reading it also does something mm. with these words, you know, and, and, and maybe he or she will talk about the book or give it to somebody else or be inspired to write something himself or herself. So, so that is yeah, for me, it's it's really powerful. Um, so that has been there all my life. And then um, when I started my business, uh, I started off as a copywriter. Then I became a content coach. Then I uh, missed writing. So I started ghostwriting books for other people. And that's how I ended up in the publishing world. I also uh, wrote my own book with a publisher, a well-known publisher in, uh, in Belgium. So, and I saw something funny because... As an author, this book is your baby, but the publisher takes over and makes decisions. And yeah, it's a very commercial world. Um, yeah, quality is sometimes to be discussed. Um, for instance, the cover of a book for me is extremely important, but a lot of the books, I'm sorry, I, I think they're really ugly. <laughs> A lot of ugly babies out there and i think oh my god it's important <laughs> the cover is also important it's, it's a whole package you know the paper the quality that you, you should cherish cherish a book um so yeah that got me thinking and fantasizing you know if i would have my own publishing company how would i do it and you know what happens you start talking about it to other people and they they go like but go for it i i other people want what you describe why don't you and then i'm okay why don't i okay, I've got this. And then I was thinking about all the steps that that make part of publishing. And I could cross off, okay, I know people who can do this. I, I know a, a printer. I know um, a graphic designer, uh, an editor, you know, and then, okay, distribution, that was the biggest challenge and I'm still learning, but it's also not that complicated. And yeah, um, and then one uh, critical moment was, um, when uh, somebody I'm working with on her book and she already she almost signed the publishing uh, contract with another uh, publishing company, it was a really good deal. And I, I nudged her to go for it. You know, this is a good deal. And she said, no, I want you to publish my book. I want you mm -hmm. to do it. I want your love and passion and care. And I said, okay, but you know, I haven't done this before. I'm totally <laughs> new. I'm completely naive. Maybe I'm saying stuff that's just, you know, uh, and she's, whatever i want you to do it and so book number one is in the making and will will be published uh normally october uh this year and then um book number two is all is already uh happening uh will be a little later and then yeah the ball just started rolling and you know um they say when when you engage with some with something with an idea and you go for it, stuff happens. You know, crazy stuff happens, and you meet 
people randomly and uh, yeah. you end up with yeah it's so uh, i haven't talked about it a lot yet because i'm still figuring a lot of things out um it is a big deal it is new um and i don't want to go too fast i want to do it right um but if i yeah every day people come to me and say wow uh the way you publish books uh i'm i'm really interested tell me more so i have to i had to say give me a moment now <laughs> so for now, yeah yeah for now i on my if you go to my website there's no way you can uh get a, an appointment with me at this very moment because i just i need some time to figure stuff out and you can can get in touch with with um my uh, online business manager and she takes notes of everything and she contacts everyone but i had to shut down the whole thing because yeah it's going so fast and i i just need time to process and and i want to do it right that's that's really important for me that's so cool so what is the name of the publishing company well actually my my company now is called um a content atelier which is basically a dutch name and then i realized uh it was also an insight i had i have to i want to make this international so i started thinking about names and i had a million names and then all of them were already taken or, or just not that cool and then somebody said to me why don't you just keep your company name um because content and atelier are both you know they're international content atelier. they're international yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly and and they yeah it covers so well what i want to do because content is okay Today it's books, but maybe in 20 years it might be something else. I don't know, but there will always be content, you know, whatever the form is. And Atelier for me stands for the craft, the mm -hmm. art, you know, the, the love, the passion. It's it's not something you just throw in, in chat GPT and it's generated and you no, know, it's it's handmade with love, you know. Um mm -hmm. I always compare, you know, you have cheese you can buy in the supermarket in plastic. Or you have the, the cheese you buy in a little French village, you know, made by a farmer with his mm. love and and with his bare hands. A kind of cheese is what I want to want to sell. So uh, that's what it stands for. Mm. So it's still content atelier, but an international uh, version. That's so cool. And you know, when you were talking about it, and I think I think that what really hit me when I read the newsletter was, it just felt so alive. You know, and that was like one of the big insights that I had in the Effortless Success Mastermind is, you know, when we create things from aliveness, it's a whole different way of being in the world, showing up to our to our business, to whatever we're creating, if it's coming from that which is alive for us, you know, and it doesn't matter if you're uh, creating cheese or if you're creating uh, content for social media if you're creating a publishing company it's that aliveness and that's what I felt when you were talking about it in the newsletter and that's what I hear again today or how, how did you experience that oh it's so it's so lovely to hear you say that for me it's a given and and when I hear you say it, it's really good for me to to hear you say it because then I know it's it's a given and it's a gift um and for me, uh, when I don't feel the aliveness, it's like it's not alive, and so it's dead actually. And um, and I I can't pursue that anymore. I I was able to do that previously, like we all a lot of people are, but today the aliveness for me it's like yeah uh, a must have. I don't function without it. It's either it's on or it's not, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and when the button is on, I'm you know. I'm all the way and I, I know I can go fast and um but when the button is not on nothing happens so uh yeah it's not a given I think for a lot of people and that's why it makes sense to you know highlight it again because you know for me I spent so many years before the principles creating things by thinking them up in my head and things that you think up out of your head are per se dead because they're on uh, a computer, which is your brain. They're just things saved there that have happened in the past and that you're just calling up again. I mean, I don't want to say dead. That's that maybe that's a little bit over, you know, not over, alive, overzealous. Yeah. yeah. Over not alive. But I, I really was, it was my, my modus operandi was to just 
when I needed to create some things to go there into my head. And I didn't have any awareness of, no, there's a, a place in me that is alive that where where things want to come through me, express through me um, in only a way that they can come through me because I'm unique on you know this planet or in this universe. And, and so because I operated so long like that, um, sometimes I'll go a good span of time in aliveness and then someday it will come and then I'm back into my head thinking things up. And so I had to really develop a compass to feel the difference between when is something coming from my thought up thinking and when is something coming from a deeper alive space in me and being able to tell the difference because I would just sometimes go marching down the opposite direction. And then I would wonder like, why is this so hard? Why is this so, such a struggle to keep this going? Why do I need so much willpower and, and strain in my brain to get this done? And it was because it wasn't coming from that space of aliveness for me. So it's so cool that you have that like on autopilot and you feel it like the majority of the time. But I think a lot of people listening do not know that they can come from aliveness or what, what do you see when you work with clients and things like that? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm very uh, blessed that the people I attract, but that's, that's also what happens when you start to, to follow that guidance, you automatically attract people who are also drawn to that kind of uh modus operandi so um and and for me it's really it's really easy when when they talk that because that's how i work i i listen especially in the content coaching but also in the ghostwriting i i listen and i can so hear the difference be between you know the the, the made-up stories and the brainy story stories or what's real and what what's alive it's not so hard. Everybody, everybody can can hear the difference or feel the difference. It's more, I think, a matter of, of feeling. Um, so yeah, that's that's something I really enjoy in the conversation. And then I I can really point out what you just said. Now was it you or was it no no? It's not me. No. Even sometimes I have clients who say, "Oh no, this was my dad," <laughs> or "Oh no, this was my former uh, manager who's still in my head and making me insecure." It's amazing how insecure we are all made uh, by the voices of other people who don't even realize that they're still influencing us. So, yeah. and I, I can just cut right through the bullshit and say, you know what, <laughs> I'm not interested in that <laughs> crap. But what you just said there, and you you can see it, in, you know, when people light up and, and like they forget they're actually talking and they just start rambling and then the beauty comes out and that's that's real you know that's that, that's the aliveness you, you talk so beautifully about and um yeah that's what I'm after when, when I work with people yeah I love that yeah and me too and and any like you said any baby can see it you know like when I could always see it in the client in my clients what's alive for them and what's not but sometimes you can't see it in your for yourself you know isn't that crazy so okay now we're coming a little bit to the end and I want to, I want to at least hear a little bit about Prague because I was um, watching on social media. I don't know if you know, but my, you know, Michael Emus from our group, uh, he was at my house recently and we went to dinner here in Epstein. We had a lovely evening and then he was telling me he's going to Prague and I learned through him that it was even happening. I don't even know how I couldn't, I could have missed it, but I was like in my own little world. And after the event, um, which was, I think it was called the the Listening World, I think yeah. was the name of the conference. And everyone was just so flashed by the event and like found it so beautiful. And um, I know you were there and um, at the conference and you met with Michael Neal. So I, like, what would you like to share about that experience in Prague that might be like interesting yeah. or impactful for others? But actually I didn't go to the conference Oh. But um, Michael Neal had a small group coaching uh, event after the conference. And I also learned about the conference after I uh, registered for that event. And I practically, I uh, I wanted to be at the conference, but it was just too challenging. So, um, but I met up with uh, Michael Imas and uh, other people who were at the conference uh, on Sunday evening when it was all finished. And it was such a beautiful experience, Shelia, because all these people I already, like you, I've met online. I had never met in, in real life. So we were in this beautiful little restaurant in Prague. 
um, outside on the terrace. And so we knew each other, but not really, you know, but kind of. Uh, <laughs> and then we started talking and there was this vibe. And I have never felt so listened to in my whole life. Surrounded by these people, I, I didn't really know. Um, and I think it was because they just, they were fresh from the conference and they were all so immersed with this understanding. And um, I was really touched by that. So if there will be a next conference, uh, I really hope next year I will be there. So I wasn't there, but I have I had a little bit of a vibe. Uh, um, I saw, of course, I saw some stuff online. Uh, you can still buy the recording. Uh, yes. I saw. Um, so um, yeah, I I think magic was shared these days, and I think it's spreading into the world, even the way we are talking about it now. Um, and I think listening is maybe. The, biggest superpower that can change so much for us today yeah. and and in, 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 in every following day so um so yeah i had a lot of fomo <laughs> when i heard about it and uh, i was like oh man i had to be there so i hope there will be uh, a next I time i had and fomo then... as well i was like so much in fomo and i mean i couldn't have even gone because we had other plans and I, I was going toward driving toward holland um the days after but yeah, I saw you can get the recordings for like 40 euros. And yeah, so and it's really, yeah. really affordable price. So I will drop the link underneath here to have a look at it. Yeah. Anything else you want to share from your meeting with Michael or anything that went on there? Yeah. So after then we, we were three days in a, in a very small group. Um, yeah, it was lovely. It was really, um, yeah, for me, a lot of people ask me, what was your what was your big insight this time? You know, because I I have uh, you know when I when I engage in in these conversations and uh, there there usually is some something I didn't know before or something new I I saw or in a different way and there isn't something new for me except that yeah um, the, the theme of the coaching was um, something about infinite possibilities uh and something else infinite or uh yeah it, it you know the main message was we are all infinite and and everything is possible it's just the only thing that stands in our way are 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 we uh and and uh, more specifically the way we think about ourselves and um so for me it was a beautiful reminder and also a confirmation of i'm in i think i said at the end of the first day i'm in the right place not only there in that hotel in Prague, but just in general, you know, things are the way they are and the way they unfold. And that's, that's, that's cool. And at the same time, there's so much more possible. So at a certain point I was sitting there in my chair and it was really nice and stuff, but I had just, I had to restrain myself from not jumping up and go outside and go do stuff you know <laughs> because that's what we are here for we just have to do stuff and follow our hunches and and create and inspire and and do crazy stuff and not think too much about it so um that's the vibe i uh, i brought home with me as you can see yeah that's that's so cool i love that and that's a really fun direction for me too to be looking in the last couple of months it's just like we are creators, like just like go out and create that beautiful life, like whatever that looks like for you. Like you and I are, um, you know, business owners. So it's a lot of times we create in the, in the framework of our business, because that's where we just like to play, but like whatever it is that you got, you're up to in life, you know, just go create something beautiful, whether it's a relationship, whether um, it's, you know, I don't know, a doily that you're crocheting. It doesn't matter. And um, yeah, go go do that. I love that message. That's so cool. So Marta, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, I think you are the second guest only we've had on the Time For You podcast. So it's a kind of like almost still the premiere of, of mm -hmm. guests being on board. What an honor. It was so cool that you came and shared your time and your insights and your energy with us. And um, 
where can people find you if they want to connect with you or somebody else might want to do the same as I do get on your e-newsletter list and put the um it's, du it's Dutch though right it's Dutch because in Belgium it's Dutch it's yes yeah. it's, it's Dutch. that's probably yes. why I had that saved in my head that you're from the Netherlands yeah that's fine to put the the, the Dutch in um in chat GPT and have it done so yeah where can you, you actually I'm already playing for a while uh, with the, the idea of, of also translating stuff in, into English so you you make me <laughs> you're tempting me there too but in the meantime yes they can they can easily uh, translate and I, I just love the fact that you do that and you take the time to uh, to do that it's so so nice so um, my website is um, www.contentatelier.be so it's uh, still a Belgian uh, website. I'm looking into the possibility to make it more international. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram. I always love it when people uh, connect and come say hi, uh, whatever country you're in or whatever you're doing or whatever part of the world you're living in. Uh, yeah, I always, I always love it when people do that. Very cool. Well, I'm sure people will come and visit and see and see what your publishing is up to and what you're creating. It's so exciting. And I will put those links underneath um, this video in the show notes so you don't have to remember them off the top of your head. And um, yeah, thanks so much. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And um, continue to nurture love, presence, and well-being in your life. And we hope you'll listen in again soon on Time For You. You can follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify or anywhere else you hear your podcast. Um, and tell a friend if you feel like um, this is um, helping you to have a moment to come down in your day, to calm your mind, and you're getting having joy doing it, share it with somebody else. Spread the love. We love it when people come on board. So thanks so much. Bye, guys.